Mike, Mike, check. Check, check, Mike. John, check. Check, Mike. Check, check, Mike. Check, check, Mike. And action. <laughs> that, that's the thumbnail. That's the thumbnail. We rolling? Boom, chicka boom, chicka boom, chicka boom. Welcome back to TheMetalFinisher.com. Today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of wet versus dry blasting. Now we're going to have, I'm sure, a couple complaints from a couple of those guys out there, maybe PB, I'm not going to say Glenn Cloak, but uh, we're going to go through the list. And We also went off a poll on Facebook, a uh, nice little group called Raw, who kind of gave me their input on the pros and cons of each, the dry and the wet. And with the mobile blast community, it seems overwhelmingly in favor of dry blasting. It was 90 to 10%. But we wanted to go over this, uh, not only for those mobile blasters, but a lot of manufacturers that are starting to get into the wet blast. And we'll also review a couple products out there. What he meant to say <laughs> was we're gonna review a couple of the wet blasters, our so-called wet blasters or injector. What are they, media or yeah. water injectors or some crap? Anyways, so we're gonna review a couple of those quickly. So stay, stay tuned. tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. Let's jump right into it. First thing we're going to talk about is the pros for dry blasting. This gives you more time after your blasting to apply the coating. Is that correct? Sounds I good. I said that okay? Sounds All right. Good. Now, if you're in a very humid area, you may not have as much time as you think, so keep an eye on that. Secondly, the uh, upfront investment is going to be much lower than when you go to a uh, typical dry wet blast. Dry pot costs less than a wet pot. Simply said, okay. like it better. Uh, from what I've heard from my mobile blaster guys, the cleanup is a lot easier with the dry blast. A lot of the guys that do the wet blasting say they have to wait um, till all the uh, media dries or else it gets really gooey, kind of like peanut butter, I think Mr. O'Toole said. <laughs> Next, I got a question mark here, is it faster? Because I saw a lot of guys who sell these wet blasters that say they can blast just as fast or faster than the dry, but the word on the street to me is the dry has been faster. And we've We've done some stuff here at the shop. We might not have video footage on it, but we've done wet and dry side by side, and I don't see any savings in time either way. They do basically the same same speed. That's right. And then lastly on my list, I have the potential for reusing media. If you're not using a one and done media, you got something more durable, and you're able to contain it and collect it and run it through a screener, you're gonna have the option to reuse that where Typically, you're not going to in the wet unless you have some kind of recovery system. Yeah, they do have a hydro floor system, but you're investing a whole lot at that point. Yeah. So to go over some of the pros on the wet side of things, you can blast in any weather conditions. So if it's raining, you ain't got to worry about it. You're getting everything wet anyways, just blasting. So you got that uh, in your favor. Um, you also reduce some of the dust. There's a reason they call it dustless. It is not free of dust, it is dustless. With a wet machine, it will cut down on the dust going into the environment and surrounding areas while you're doing your blast. Some of them advertise up to 93%. Nice, yep. nice. You can also have a reduction in media. Now this kind of depends on the style of wet blasting that you're doing. If you're using kind of a slurry style blast like the Greener Blast technology machine, um, you do have a reduction in media consumption over a dry pot, whereas if you're doing like an injection method, you might not have that. So uh, there is a, another added bonus of you have the ability to wash and blast either at the same time or in two different cycles, but it's all there, wet, dry, uh, air only. You got kind of your three options right there in one machine. And one of the big features that we see all the time, the automotive industry are loving these machines. You throw a little bit of water into that abrasive mix, you can reduce some of the heat, reduce some of the friction, don't have as much warping, and have a little bit better job when doing automotive. That's what she said. All right, so let's move on for, uh, to the cons for dry blasting. There's a lot more dust. That's obvious, nobody can dis dispute that. You're gonna have a ton more dust than with the wet blasting. All right, so in some cases uh, with dry blasting, you're gonna use 70 to 80% more abrasive. This is especially true if you're wet blasting with like a greener blast or a eco quip. Um, not so much with those guys who inject the water into the blast stream uh, versus the one that mix it inside the pot. 
So basically, like the uh, the Clemco, uh, what is it, Amphibi something? No, it's the Clemco, what do they call them, Flex, because they're flexible. Yeah, it injects the media, or I'm sorry, it injects the water with the media at the hose, kind of like uh, the wind nozzle. You're injecting the water into the media at the nozzle instead of the hose. You're not going to see any uh, reduced consumption of media because you're basically dry blasting and adding water. Well, they to, to be fair to them, they also offer the option to inject the water after the grip valve. Nice. So I don't know how much that does other than save a little bit on some hoses and nozzles, but you know, whatever, let them have their fun. All right, so dry uh, blasting, your parts are gonna wear faster, which means higher consumables. Um, the, the wet blast definitely helps uh, wear or save the wear items uh, a little bit longer than the dry blast does. And then lastly, you can't do wet blasting with the dry blaster. Unless you got a wind nozzle. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So uh, while we're on cons, let's go over some of the wet ones. Um, you can have uh, more flash rust when you're doing wet because you're putting moisture onto your metals if you're not using a rust inhibitor. But it also kind of works the flip side where you can put rust inhibitor right into your blast stream and then you don't have to do that afterwards. Um, another con of the wet blast systems, a lot of times you're gonna have to empty out that pot if you've got a slurry pot. Uh, that stuff will turn to sludge and possibly harden at the bottom of your machine. So after you're done at the end of the day, you do need to crack your valves open and clean everything out. <laughs> That's what she said, right? Well. <laughs> and then if you're right. using an injection system, um, you're really not saving anything on the abrasives. Um, we're putting that into the wet category because the injections are wet, but again, it's basically a dry blast with a wet injection, um, so you're really not going to save any on abrasives. And then another, uh, most of the wet blast systems, you get the options of uh, doing wet, dry, or have a, a air wash or blow down, um, but some of the units as a con, you're not going to get that feature, in particular the greener blast there is no possibility of blasting dry. All right, guys, so stay tuned. Uh, we're gonna take a quick sponsor break, and when we come back, we're gonna talk about a couple of units that are out there in the market for wet blasters. So get out there and blast, but stay tuned. And stay dry and wet. BlueDogBlasting.com. All right, guys, welcome back, and thanks to our sponsor, Blue Dog. So now we're gonna talk about a few machines that are out there on the market today that are advertised as wet blasters. We did leave out a couple, you know, like the dustless blast thing. They're doing good enough with their advertisements. So go ahead, Sean, kick us off. Yeah, let's start with the Clemco Flex. So uh, the Clemco Flex, eh, the Clemco. <laughs> it's Clemco, the Clemco Flex. Flex is a, uh, it operates off of 50 to 100 PSI. It has two different injector ports. So you can either go right after the metering valve or in line with the hose. It features a six cubic foot pot with a 120 gallon water reserve tank and features a AQV, which is a auto quantum metering valve. And if anybody knows what the heck that means, comments below. Come on, Clone Co., help us out. You've been very vocal lately. Come on, be vocal today. Put us down a comment there. Tell us what that AQV is. All right, go ahead, Sean, I'm sorry. So the next one up is the Schmidt Antiblast. It is a single outlet or double outlet. The single outlet features a 4.5 cubic pot with an 80 gallon water tank, whereas the double has a 6.5 with a 165 gallon. It only injects the water after the metering valve, so you don't get that hose-to-hose uh, hose connection like the Clunko Flex does, um, but it does have a soft wash with a blow-off feature. So both of those are basically water injection. Correct. So, or you can get a wind nozzle. Yeah, so I was thinking we just go ahead and take the Empire out like we did a couple months ago, hook up the uh, water induction nozzle, maybe get a watering tank with a pump, with that, about 6,500 bucks there. I don't know what these guys cost, but you know, they're great machines. I've really, I've seen a couple of demos of these. They're great machines. So we're just messing around with you guys. But anyways, so let's move on to two that I prefer over the other two. And these are both units that uh, mix the abrasive and the water inside the tank. And uh, this is gonna help. Slurry blast. Slurry blast. 
this is going to help uh, save on wear parts. You're going to use a lot less media. So well, let's start with the Graco EcoQuip 2. These guys actually came out um, to our demo day a few months back and uh, got to see them side by side with the next one we're going to be talking about is the Greener Blast. Um, but they both did really good. I like them both. Good machines. Um, Another thing that intrigues me about this, and I encourage you, I'll actually put it up here for you to watch, only for a couple seconds, so you need to go look yourself. But they did a test uh, up against Dustless Blast with a third party, independent party, that blasted both parts. Um, they ran a, uh, they blasted on a four by four foot um, steel plate, uh, removing two to three mils of primer. And the EcoQuip was actually over a minute faster um, than the Dustless Blaster. So kudos to you guys. Now, you know I'm biased here, but my favorite wet blaster out there on the market is the GBT 760, the Greener Blast Technologies. Um, this machine, this full machine is hot dipped and galvanized and also powder coated. Um, as the 760 says, it's a 7.6 cubic uh, foot pot um, with a 100 gallon uh, water tank and that media and water are mixed inside the tank, which gives you uh, reduced media usage. Right. They use about 100 to 150 pounds, which is two to three bags an hour. Uh, never seen that happen in a dry blast, maybe in a Harbor Freight cabinet, but not here. So anyways, uh, they're pneumatically operated, but they also have the option for the 12 volt system. Uh, they blast from 15 to 120 PSI, and they can handle zero to four mil achievable surface profile. Thanks for joining us again today at TheMetalFinisher.com. If you have any product or process reviews, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Also, if you have some more uh, pros and cons that you'd like to add to our list, you can also put those down in the comment section below. Be sure to go over to Blue Dog Blasting if you need any of your parts for your wet blasters. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go ahead and like us on Facebook. Thanks again for joining us. And get out and blast.